Hey everybody, welcome, welcome. Um, you know, leading up to the 21st, December 21, 2012, just want to sort of take this time to reiterate, re, um, remind us of, of what we're supposed to focus on no matter what we think is going to happen. There's just some things that keep it really, really simple, and I, I just want to spend this week, Lord willing, reminding us what we're supposed to do. Okay, um, today we're going to be studying in First Thessalonians, and we just want to pray, dear Heavenly Father, we pray to you to grant us the wisdom, the courage, the discernment necessary to study your word, to reflect on ourselves and our lives, and walk according to your words and your commands. As we await the return of our Lord and Savior, Yehoshua HaMashiach. And we pray this in the name of Yeshua and the Ruach HaKodesh. Amen. Because it's waiting. Waiting patiently. <clears throat> you know, when you're, in a, when you're in a waiting room, like say the, the emergency room, and you're not feeling good, or, or you're you know, waiting for an appointment, you know, you have two options, really. Just relax read, you know, be patient, or you get up in pace and, you know, keep looking at the clock and, you know, have this angst, this anxiety, and that's what I think, uh, you know, a lot of people, they turn to that, you know, they turn to that angst and that anxiety to help them pass the time when really we should use this time every day to reflect, to read, to meditate in prayer with our Lord, you know, as to what He'd have us do each moment as we await the end, okay? First Thessalonians, chapter 1, verse 1. From Paul, Silvanus, and Timothy, to the church of the Thessalonians, in union with God the Father, and the Lord Jesus, the Messiah, Yeshua HaMashiach, may grace and peace from God our Father, and the Lord Jesus, the Messiah, be yours. We always thank God for all of you when we mention you in our prayers. In the presence of our God and Father, we constantly remember how your faith is active, your love is hard at work, and your hope in our Lord, Yeshua HaMashiach, is enduring. Brothers whom, the, whom God loves, we know that He has chosen you. For the gospel, we, we, the gospel we brought did not come to you in words only, but also with power, with the Holy Spirit, and with deep conviction. Indeed, you know what kind of people we proved to be while we were with you, acting on your behalf. And you can see here, they brought them the gospel in words. They, they taught them from the Old Testament. They taught them from the letters and, and, and words that they had knowledge of through the Holy Spirit. Our Bible is important. And in the Bible, in conjunction with the Holy Spirit and with a deep conviction that this is truth and a faith, you will prosper, you will grow, and I don't mean prosper financially, I mean you will have the patience of the saints, you will have the patience to sit and wait and evaluate your lives moment by moment in, in preparation for the return of our Lord and Savior. <clears throat> you became imitators of us and of the Lord, and we need to be, become imitators of these apostles, these disciples, and our Lord. Okay, in spite of a great deal of suffering, you welcome the word with joy that the Holy Spirit produces. No matter what you're going through, there should be a joy in our hearts about what we really have, the prize that is really awaiting us, okay? Eternal life with Yahshua on this planet in, into eternity, okay? As a result, you became a model for all the believers in Macedonia and, and Ashaya. From you, the word of the Lord has spread out not only in Macedonia and Ashaya, but also in every place where your faith in God has become known. As a result, we do not need to say anything about it. You know, it just stands for, stands alone. Their their behavior, their faith, it, it it's spreading the gospel. And for this, Paul is Paul is blessed and he's he's joyful. For keep. People keep telling us what kind of welcome you gave us and how you turned away from idols to serve a living and true God, okay? And to wait for his son, whom he raised from the dead, to come back from heaven. This Jesus is the one who rescues us from the coming wrath. We have no need to be concerned about 
earthquakes, tidal waves, tsunamis, okay, meteor showers. Jesus will rescue us from the coming wrath, whatever that means, okay? First Thessalonians chapter 2. For you yourselves know, brothers, that our visit to you was not a waste of time. As you know, we suffered persecution and were mistreated in Philippi. Yet we were encouraged by our God to tell you his, peop his gospel in spite of strong opposition. For our appeal to you does not spring from deceit, impure motives, or trickery. Rather, because we have been approved by God to be entrusted with the gospel, we speak as we do, not trying to please people, but God, okay, who tests our motives, okay. As you know, we did not come with flattering words or with a scheme to make money. God is our witness. See, people so much, so often associate Christianity as just another religion. You might as well be Hare Krishna if you're out there for money, okay. The bottom line is... To have people like you and to have them want to pay you, and these are the wrong reasons. You preach God's word, you teach God's word, you share God's word, and, and it cuts both ways. People are not always going to want to hear it, but if they react to it in a positive way, it could change their lives into eternity. Okay? Seek to please God and not people, and you, and you will please God and not people. Okay? We did not seek praise from people from you or from anyone else, even though as apostles of the Messiah we might have made such demands. You know what I mean? They could have been arrogant and boasting and, and demanded respect, but they did not seek praise from people. All glory be to God. Praise ye, praise ye Yah. Hallelujah. Okay? Instead, we were gentle among you, like a nursing mother tenderly caring for her own children. We cared so deeply for you that we were determined to share with you not only the gospel of God, but our very lives. That is how dear you were to us. And, and by sharing their very lives, meaning as an example, letting them know everything about themselves so that they, that, that life was appealing. And that those blessings and that serenity and that peace and that strength and that courage was appealing to people. Okay? Brothers, you remember our labor and toil. We work night and day so that we would not become a burden to any of you while we proclaim the gospel of God to you. And you can imagine these apostles coming in and setting up in town and, you know, pitching their own tents, sweeping the streets cleaning the place, you know, build, helping people, repairing tents, and, and you know, shearing sheep, whatever they could do, they, they became a help to these people and not a hindrance, not like these, these, these fat and lazy, and they don't have to be physically fat, but, but spiritually fat and lazy pastors who, who just take money and money and money from people and become basically a burden to them, okay? You and God are witnesses of how pure, honest, and blameless our conduct was among you who believe. Okay? You know very well that we treated each of you the way that a father treats his children. We comforted and encouraged you, urging you to live in a manner worthy of God, who calls you into his kingdom and glory. Here is another reason why we constantly give thanks to God. When you receive God's word, which you heard from us, you did not accept it as the word of humans, but for what it is, really is, the word of God, which is at work in you who believe. This is that. This is that word of God. And although I'm saying these words and I'm sharing these words with you, you have a conviction that this is the word of God. And these words are resonating within your spirit. And the Holy Spirit is working with you to comprehend these words and, and to hold them as true so that you can embrace this life and embrace this walk with the Lord, okay? Uh, under any circumstance, okay? For you, brothers, became imitators of the churches of God in Judea that are in union with Yeshua HaMashiach. You suffered the same persecutions from the people of your own country as they did from those Jews. Okay? Who killed the Lord Yeshua and the prophets, who have persecuted us, and who pleased neither God nor any group of people. And you can imagine... You know, these are the Jews, these are the Pharisees, these are the people who ran the church, these are the people whom Yeshua commanded. You listen to them. Don't be like them, but listen to them. And you can imagine the state of the church today. Okay? 
as they try to keep us from telling the Gentiles how they can be saved. As a result, they are constantly adding to the number of sins they have committed. However, wrath has overtaken them at last. Brothers, although we have been separated from you for a little while, in person but not in heart, we eagerly desire to see you again face to face. That is why we wanted to come to you. Certainly I, Paul, wanted to come time and again, but Satan blocked our way. And Satan knows the work he's doing. Paul is not impervious to Satan's guiles. So Satan is putting it in men's minds to capture him, to persecute him, to keep him from getting to the places he needs to go because Satan knows that this church is being grounded by men like Paul and he's doing anything in his power to stop them. But it is this persecution that allows people to see what he's willing, go, willing to go through okay, to teach the word of God, to teach the gospel so that the Holy Spirit can work with those who listen and those who seek truth to have eternal life, okay? After all, who is our hope, joy, or reason for rejoicing in the presence of our Lord Yeshua at His coming? It is you, isn't it? And th what He's saying is, that is His work. He is in the field. He is he, the Master returns. He will be a, have been a productive servant, and they are rejoicing in the presence of the Lord for the people that they have brought to the Lord. Okay, and we need to have some of that inside us. Okay. Bringing people to the Lord so that you can rejoice at His coming and say, Look who I brought you. Okay? And yes, you cannot save anybody, but you can be proactive in doing the Lord's work with the Lord. Okay? And, and, and allowing the Holy Spirit to work in the seed you have, you have planted. Okay? To germinate that seed. Okay? Yes, you are our glory and joy. Everyone who has come to the Lord through Paul's words adds to his glory and his joy, and he is the least in heaven. Okay, chapter 3. Therefore, when we could stand it no longer, we decided to remain alone in Athens and send Timothy, our brother, who works with us for God in the gospel of the Messiah, to strengthen and encourage you in your faith, so that no one would be shaken by these persecutions for which you are aware that we were destined. Okay? They are okay with that. And and uh, Timothy is telling them, hey, these guys are cool. They're doing the Lord's work. Satan is, is out to get them. But you need to be strong, even in the face of this kind of adversity. Okay? To strengthen and encourage you in your faith so that no one would be shaken by these persecutions for which you are aware that we were destined. In fact, when we were with you, we told you ahead of time that we were going to suffer persecution. And as you know, that is what happened. And in the end times, the Christians who, who truly hold to the word of God will suffer persecutions. And we are being told beforehand. Okay? And it would give others strength knowing that this persecution is coming and they need to be prepared for it. Okay? But when I could stand it no longer, I sent Timothy to find out about your faith. I was afraid that the tempter had tempted you in some way and that our work had been a waste of time. But Timothy has just now returned from visiting you and has told us the good news about your faith and love. He also told us that you always have fond memories of us and want to see us just as we want to see you. That's why, brothers and sisters, in all your distress and persecution, we have been encouraged about you by our faith. For now we can go on living, as long as you continue to stand firm in the Lord. How can we thank God enough for you in return for all the joy that we have in God's presence because of you? Okay? The joy that they have in God's presence. Okay? Because of those believers that they have influenced and that the Holy Spirit has led to salvation. Okay? We pray very hard night and day that we may see you again face to face so that we may equip you with whatever is lacking in your faith. Now may our God and Father and our Lord Yeshua provide a way for you, for us to visit you. May the Lord greatly increase your love for each other and for all people just as we love you. And you see what he's praying for them? That their love continue to increase because they, we are still humans and we still have this this sin that permeates us and so we have to continue striving in that love okay then your hearts will be strong blameless and holy in the presence of God who is our father when our Lord Jesus appears with all his saints 
Okay, now Paul's starting to get into this appearance and, and starting to give you more information that Yeshua is going to appear with his saints. It isn't going to be one man. Look, he's over there in the desert. Look, he's over here. He's going to come with all his saints. And don't be fooled by 10, 20, even 200 fallen angels. We're talking a myriad, an uncountable amount of saints. Thousands and thousands. Okay? Sometimes translated as 10,000. Sometimes translated as a number that can't be counted. Okay, but when the Lord Jesus appears, he will appear with all his saints, not some of them, all of them. Okay, now then, brothers, you learn from us how you ought to live and to please God, as in fact you were doing. We ask and encourage you in the Lord to do so even more, even more can never be satisfied. You can never settle like we're doing enough. You always need to strive for more, more, com more um, complacency that you cannot control the world, more satisfaction that as long as you're pleasing the Lord, you don't need to worry about what's going on here, that you want to be found worthy upon His return, okay? You know what instructions we gave you through the Lord Jesus, for it is God's will that you be sanctified. You must abstain from sexual immorality. This is a problem in our world, and we think that, you know, we call it, they call it making love. And, it, and, 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 and unless you're in a married, committed relationship, you are just out to satisfy the lusts of your own body. And if you're not careful, the demons that are, in, are, are walking with you to experience that, that, that power and that lust with you. Okay? M remember, you've heard she has a demon. Okay? He has a demon. Okay? Working you like a puppet Friday night at the club. Go get me some. Okay? Each of you must know how to control his, their own body in a holy and honorable manner. You know, and, and it's even like masturbation and things like that, you know. I'm sorry, people. It's not, it is, it is perverse in the sense that it's a lack of control. Oh, I need this point zero eight milliseconds of pleasure because I can't live with myself as I await for the Lord. I need to feel satisfied in satisfaction. That is your lustly body, you know, and that is, that is the evil of this world. Having you lose control of your body, okay, and, and, and dishonoring your body for your need to feel some earthly uh, sensation okay think about it okay not with passion and lust like the Gentiles who do not know God passion and lust furthermore you must and don't confuse this sense of romanticism and and a desire for a, a, a partner and, and and somebody who who is your life partner or, or a spouse who you can share a romantic relationship with we're talking about passion and lust just straight up freakazoid okay and there's a difference okay and Paul says you know you you know if you if you can't if you can't be alone like him and just do God's work get you a spouse okay so you don't burn with this lust okay and let's say start to work on your mind Okay, and have you thinking that, oh, I love Jesus, I'm saved, but I just have, you know, this is just what I, one of the things I do that he's going to forgive me for. How crazy is that? But we think that, okay? <laughs> Furthermore, you must never take advantage of or, of or exploit a brother in this regard because the Lord avenges all these things, just as we already told you and warned you. Using sexual lust and passion, your own sexual lust and passion, and being deceitful and deceptive, and taking advantage or and exploiting a brother or sister for your own satisfaction, and that's the game. That's like, you know, hit it and quit it. Okay, admit it. You know. Because the Lord avenges all these things, just as we already told you and warned you. Fear God. Okay? For God did not call us to be impure, but to be holy. Therefore, whoever rejects this instruction is not rejected human authority, but God, who gives you His Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit wants to live in a temple. It does not want to dwell in a whorehouse. 
Okay? Think about it. Now, if you're in a committed married relationship, that is that is something that you share with you, the, the person you love and you're not taking advantage of them for your own lustly desires, but you're in a romantic, loving, caring relationship. It is in the flesh, but it is yours. She has no power over her body because she's to give it to you. And you have no power over your body because you have to give it to her. Okay? That's the relationship of husband and wife. Okay? So many... So many relationships, Satan works hard to destroy relationships through sex, whether there's sexual perversion or just the whole desire that sex is power. Satan, that's how Satan works, okay? Now you do not, this is 4-9, now you do not need anyone to write to you about brotherly love since you have been taught by God to love each other. You have been instructed by God. You have been commanded by God to love each other. It is a mistake when you cannot find love in your heart for somebody and you need to acknowledge that mistake and you need to repent of it and you need to make it right by that person by even submitting yourself to a humility that says, hey, I'm so sorry, I, I, I must forgive you for what I said. It's, you know, it's nothing thing I want to have between us and I apologize and, and not try to say but you did this and you did that therefore I had the right to be angry okay just apologize okay and move forward and repent to God okay in fact if you are showing love to all the brothers throughout Macedonia but we urge you brothers to keep doing this even more you can never show enough love okay also make it your goal to live quietly to mind your own business and to work with your hands as we instructed you. Be self-sufficient so that you may win the respect of outsiders and, who, and have need of nothing. Okay, how good is your God who provides you everything if you're trying to get it from here and there and, 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 and oh, I need this, I need that, oh, uh, oh, help me with this. No, if you're living right, you will have everything you need and the things that you can't afford, maybe you don't need. Okay? But we do not want you to be ignorant, brothers, about those who have died, so that you may not grieve like other people who have no hope. Okay, look, take this back to what happened in Connecticut, grieving for the loss of lives. But we do not want you to be ignorant about those who have died so that you may not grieve like other people who have no hope if you have hope you will look past that moment and you will say that I came into this world naked I will leave this world naked and praise God and praise God worship the Lord under every circumstance and then you're you're, you're gonna assure yourself that you're not falling into this desires for this world kind of grief oh they're not going to be able to grow up and party they're not going to be able to grow up and you know partake in this economy they're not going to be able to grow up and you know yeah i'm not mocking it and i'm not belittling it but it is that that grief is that whole nonsense that they don't get this 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 evil world and we need to face up to that and, and God forbid it happened to any one of us. But if it does, we need to reach down inside and, and have hope under any circumstance. Okay? For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so through Yeshua, God will bring those who have died with Him. All His saints. At the end, he will bring them with him. For we declare to you what the Lord has told us to say. We who are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord will by no means precede those who have died. All his saints. Okay? With a shout of a command and with the archangel's call and with the sound of God's trumpet, the Lord himself will come down from heaven and the dead who belong to the Messiah will rise first and join him and all his saints. Then we who are alive and remain will be caught up in the clouds together with them to meet the Lord in the air, and so we will be with the Lord forever. And so we will be with the Lord forever in the spirit, in the pneuma, okay? The air, yes, if you go up into the clouds momentarily, 
That's fine, but you know and you've read that New Jerusalem comes down to earth and that we are in the earth, we are on the earth with the Lord at the end, okay? So it's not going to be up in the clouds forever, okay? We're going to be with Him in that spirit body, in that twinkly manai, that transfiguration forever with those who were sleeping and that who were risen from the dead, Okay, who are in the pneuma, in the spirit, and so shall we be forever. Okay, so then, encourage one another with these words. You need to have hope. For the loss of a loved one and the grieving and mourning, get over it soon. Because you have hope for them and hope for yourself. Okay, that this is not real. Okay, and that the dead in Christ will rise first. Chapter 5. Now you do not need to have anything written to you about times and dates, brothers. Don't be worried about when and how and what and when and how and what sign, okay? Although we are concerned, and this is probably what this, you know, this whole watch is about, is pre being prepared and on watch, but it's also, more importantly, about our daily walk with God. Okay, our daily walk in the narrow way, following Yeshua. Okay, for you yourselves know very well that the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. You are not going to know when that day comes. And that day starts with great tribulation. Okay, it's just going to start to unfold the day of the Lord. Boom, 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 And it's on. And before you know it, it's just happening. Okay, when people say... There is peace and security. Destruction will strike them as suddenly as labor pains come to a pregnant woman and they will not be able to escape. Okay? Peace and security. And that will never happen until supernatural entities come down to this planet and squash it. Men cannot do it, will not do it, don't want to do it. So this peace and security is the abomination, that disgusting thing. Okay? the ten kings that attempt to mingle with the seed of men, okay? The return of the fallen angels and Satan himself, okay? However, brothers, you were not in the darkness in order that the day of the Lord might surprise you like a thief. Hmm. Meaning what? We're going to be on watch. We're going to know the signs. We're not going to be surprised, okay? For all of you are children of the light and children of the day. We do not belong to the night or darkness. Therefore, let's not fall asleep like others do, but let's stay awake and be sober and be on watch. Don't be asleep on watch like the others do. Be ready, awake, sober, quick to think. You know, not being distracted by any chemicals that 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 would would have you in a false sense of uh, security. Okay, be awake, be alert. Okay. Therefore, let us not fall asleep like others do, but let's stay awake and be sober. For people who go to sleep, go to sleep at night, and people who get drunk, get drunk at night. But since we belong to the day, let's be sober. We must put on the breastplate of faith and love and the hope of salvation as a helmet. For God has not destined us to receive wrath, but to obtain salvation through our Lord Jesus the Messiah. Okay? Salvation, saved from the wrath. Who died for us in order that, whether we are awake or asleep, we may live together with Him. Whether, you have, whether they are dead or awake when He comes, we will all live together with Him. So then encourage one another and build each other up as you are doing. Brothers, ask to sh we ask to show your appreciation for those who work among you. Set an example for you in the Lord and instruct you. Hold them in the highest regard, loving them because of their work. Live in peace with each other. Okay? If you've got a pastor, if you're fortunate enough to have a man of God in, in your life that is a pastor, and you go to him, you need to embrace those words. If, if you don't have that, and, and, and this is the place where you come for that, I am truly blessed, and I thank you, and I thank God for allowing me to be here for you. But it is this word that you have available to you. Okay, to to read this word and to embrace this word and maybe become a worker amongst the people around you. Okay. 
we urge you, brothers, to admonish those who are idle, lazy, okay, not trying. Cheer up those who are discouraged. I'm so sad. What about those kids in Connecticut? That's so sad. I just don't know if God really exists. You need to give them the gospel. You need to show them the hope that exists and that, that those kids, that everything else is happening around them. Those kids are fine, innocent, not having to grow up in this world, but, but set aside chosen by our Lord to, yes, meet this tragic fate, but for His glory in the hope and the courage that people will gain from this experience, okay? Through faith, okay? And help those who are weak. Be patient with everyone, with love, and don't, you know, I, sometimes... We all would think, you know, there's a little self-righteousness in our voice sometimes as we're like, can't you just get up and stand up like a warrior, you know? But patience, please stand like a warrior, okay? Stand like a warrior in these times and face this because you have hope and, and faith of salvation through the shed blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, okay? Make sure that no one pays back evil for evil. Instead, always pursue what is good for each other and for everyone else. Always be joyful. Continually be prayerful. Continue in prayer. Always acknowledging God. Always thanking God. Always asking for forgiveness. For those things you know you're doing. And everything be thankful. Because this is God's will for you in the Messiah Jesus. Do not put out the Spirit's fire. Do not despise prophecies. Instead, test everything. Hold on to what is good. Okay? And that's what we do. Watching this YouTube and all these visions and dreamers and all these people hearing God's word, we need to test that. Okay? And hold on to what is good. Okay? Micah's mommy, three days of darkness. It's in there. It's good. Some of these other people, they're tripping. And you've got to test them. Okay? Keep away from every kind of evil. Every kind of evil. Okay? May the God of peace himself make you holy in every way. And may your whole being, spirit, soul, and body remain blameless when our Lord Jesus the Messiah appears. Look at this. May the God of peace himself make you holy in every way. So, yes, it's hard. Oh, I can't do it. Well, you can't do it. You need to ask God to do it. Please, Father, give me the strength, okay, and make me holy, okay? It's beyond your capacity to understand how you can just become holy, but it is within your capacity to strive for it daily through prayer and repentance, okay? Worshiping, fasting, giving, loving, 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 loving. okay? The one who calls you is faithful, and he will continue to be faithful. Brothers, pray for us. Greet all the brothers with a holy kiss. In order, and I order you by the Lord to have this letter read to all the brothers. May the grace of the Lord Jesus, the Messiah, be with you. Amen. Now go and tell me that the Bible don't need to be read. Go and tell me right here that we don't need the doctrine of man. Paul says, I order you by the Lord to have this letter read to all the brothers. And I just read it because I was commanded to, to, to share this gospel, to share this good news. So when people tell you, oh, the Bible's written by men, and by, yes, by men inspired by the Holy Spirit, okay? I love you guys. Be on watch. He comes as a thief in the night, but to those who are aware, those who are in God's word, those who are, are walking with the Lord, with the Holy Spirit, we will know. And we will be used at that time to bring as many to the Lord as possible. So up until that time, we are practicing every day. Okay? I love you guys. God willing, we'll go over Second Thessalonians tomorrow. A little bit more about the return of our Lord, timing, prophecies, etc. And all the way up to the 21st of December, where I promise you something's going to happen on this channel. Okay? I'm no prophet. But I can say, Lord willing, I'm here December 21st, 2012. If we're still here... Okay? Which we will be. Okay? If you read prophecy, it ain't over. 
until it's over. Okay? So, I love you guys, and I pray for all of us. You know, we need this hope and this faith, and that we need to pray to God to, to give us righteousness and give us the holiness that we need and to make us pure. We can't do it on our own. We've tried. And we need to turn to the Lord with all our hope and all our faith and all our trust. And if you're not saved, you need to ask the Father. Dear Heavenly Father, help us come to you. Help us find you and seek you. And, and, and salvation through the, the, the precious shed blood of our Lord and Savior, your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach. And we pray this in the name of Yeshua. And we pray in the name of your Holy Spirit, the Ruach HaKodesh. Amen. Peace.